Hello everyone, this is Business Incorporated on Channels Television, INBC at Dibayo. Coming up, the South African government replaces all six board members of its troubled national carrier, South African Airways. And Zimbabwe reports a higher tax revenue, surpassing third quarter figures by 19%. Plus, World Food Prize laureates seek quick action to stop the spread of armyworm, which has destroyed several African crops. Well, let's head straight to the stock markets now, beginning from Africa, where the indices are mixed at intraday. Nigeria's all share index is up 0.02%, while the South African burst is down 0.69% at intraday. Egypt's index is keeping up yesterday's gains with a 1.02% jump at intraday. The Kenyan burst closed 0.5% lower on Wednesday. And banks led the Saudi Arabian stock market up early on Thursday after Riyadh Bank beat expectations for its earnings, while builder Drake and Skull jumped in Dubai. The Saudi stock index climbed 0.6%. In Dubai, Drake and Skull, which has attracted renewed interest since it completed a capital restructuring early this month, gained 5.3% to 2.0 dirhams in heavy trade. It has climbed by more than a third since early October. In Abu Dhabi, Dana Gas added 2.7% after saying that its operations and production in Iraqi Kurdistan were continuing as normal and following the Iraqi military's retaking of some of its biggest oil fields from Kurdistan special mega forces. Well, Qatar's index rose 0.3%. Askata Islamic Bank gains 1.1% after reporting a 10.9% jump in the third quarter net profit in line with analyst forecast. And the European markets fuel into the red today as crisis surrounded Catalonia escalated and the earnings season delivered a mixed bag of results. Well, for more on the European markets, let's talk to Conrad Busin, who is at the Frankfurt Stock Exchange. It's good to see you, Conrad. So the conflict between Catalonia and the federal government of Spain has reached new heights and in Brussels, the summit of the EU leaders is taking place today. How are all this impacting on the markets today? Well, I have to say, the jitters are back. Nervousness is back. Check out the German equity index tax today. This looks uh, very jittery, very nervous. Of course, we have to keep in mind that the German DAX had reached record levels yesterday. On such high levels, investors are quite ready to take some of the profits off the table. On the bond markets, I spoke to a bond trader today because Spain came to the markets with fresh Spanish government bonds worth up to 4 billion euros. He said that demand for those bonds was high and the interest that Spain has to pay investors was low. Lower than recently and lower than when this conflict between uh, Catalonia and the central government of Spain escalated first. So no real negative pricing in yet, but certainly nervousness. Same with uh, Brexit and with the EU summit is happening, happening there, where Theresa May is expected to try to influence her colleagues in order to accelerate the Brexit talks. I have to say there's not much hope among people I talk to that she will be successful. Uh, you have to f talk about the divorce settlements first before you can talk about how trade should look like after the divorce. Now, China remains on track to meet its target despite uh, growth slowing slightly to 6.8% in the last quarter. How's the markets reacting to this? Well, uh, of course, the 6.8%, uh, that's slightly below what the government in Beijing itself is targeting. So this uh, seems to contribute a bit to the reluctance of investors to continue to buy uh, company shares. And also, of course, um, you know, I have to say, investors, traders are taking this data from China always with a grain of salt. Uh, China has a reputation of doctoring economic figures and especially now with this uh, Communist Party Congress with, uh, which only happens every five years. Um, I don't know if you saw the pictures from Beijing. This looks like a perfectly orchestrated show of order and of strength. It would be very surprising if China didn't come out with data that more or less meets the official targets of the government. Nevertheless, um, and if you look at the reaction of the Asian markets today, the mere fact that this data was reported more or less in line with what had been communicated before and what had been expected is 
a sign of reassurance to the markets. Now, just before I let you go, Conrad, the earnings season is underway. We have eBay and American Express, are two companies that talked about their third quarter earnings, and the German software giant SAP, or SAP, is the first big firm in Frankfurt's market to present a report card. What does it look like? Not so very good. SAP, the sales numbers and the profit margins did not really meet analysts' expectations. The company share is lower today. It's the biggest drag on, drag on the DAX right now, down 2%. eBay is another good example for a disappointment today. The share is traded here in Frankfurt today 7% lower. Um, the of course, uh, eBay is a company that needs to spend a lot of money on marketing right now, so that's negative. But I have to say, the overall report, both eBay and SAP, were okay, slightly below market's expectations. These are two examples that show that if you really want to lure investors into buying company shares uh, now on this very high overall level of the market, it needs more than just reports in line with expectations. And if you come in slightly below expectations, investors are easily ready to sell those shares. We're getting more reports uh, later today and also tomorrow, and it's going to be interesting to see how those uh, quarterly earnings reports will be faring. Well, we'll see how they fare in the coming days. Well, thanks, Conrad, for those updates, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Just one last day. And U.S. stock futures fell sharply on Thursday, putting record levels for major indexes on the line as technology-related shares such as eBay, Apple, and NVIDIA took a sharp tumble. So what are the stock index futures doing? We'll see the Dow Jones Industrial Average pulling back from a deeper 100-point-plus loss earlier on Thursday, but we're still down 0.6% to 22,000. 972. Meanwhile, the S&P 500 futures dropped 0.54 percent. The weakness was more pronounced for the Nasdaq 100 futures, which slumped 0.79 percent to 6,080.5.